let's start with your character. Who you play? Tell us about the show and, and um, what we are going to see here. I play a character named Taka. He's a detective of uh, you know the NYPD force, and uh, it's kind of a, a loner <coughs> character who they call him the Hunch, and he always has these weird hunches, and so it kind of like outcasts him a little bit on the force, and he does a lot of things on his own. Um, but in in the course of the show, he starts piecing together these things that start connecting all three of our characters. You know. Um, Burton and Tess and myself um, and so he starts finding things that are happening in his dream and those pieces that he finds kind of lead him towards something that's happening in the real world and then they soon collide so yeah he's kind of a, he's, he's kind of a, a, a lonesome deep thinking kind of guy cool it, it, the show itself and, and the, the construct of, of dreams right it sounds pretty unique I'm trying to think of a, 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 a comparable program or a movie yeah. I mean, outside, outside of Inception maybe yeah. you know is it, is it truly going into uncharted territory in terms of the story yeah. and what you're trying to tell yeah you know I, me and Blake um, who created the show we, you know, we had this this talk and I asked him how he came about this show and yeah. you know he said well if I was going to make a TV show um, what would I do and he said well I, he had this idea and he's like how big do I swing? And he said, I'm just going to swing for the fences and see if it happens. Because it's one of those shows that really doesn't have a template. And it's a show that you can't be on your phone watching. And it's re really, it's a really smart show and exciting and weird and all those things. And it's, it's, uh, you know, usually I do television. I never watch the shows I've done. You know, I'll like every once in a while I'll catch something. But this was the show that all the actors, like collectively, would text each other and go, Did you get the next script? Or what did, what did Blake say at lunch? You know, we would try to force things out. So it was one of those, like, it was in the words, and all we had to do was show up. That's great. Your so. character really has a connection to his mother, and that seems to be a central point. Did that connection to family help you relate to the character more? It did. I mean, there was, you know, just the things that have happened in my past. There's a there's a melancholy kind of thing that melancholy kind of thing that surrounds me and my mother in the show. And you know, I drew upon a lot of things that happened in my in my life, which you know, we had this conversation with uh, on one of the panels where I'm like, did he? I feel I feel like I, I wrote him a bio about my life and he put it in the show, but he wrote it before I ever met him. So it was, it was cathartic and, and it sucked at the same time having to deal with a lot of issues uh, on the show. Yeah, I can relate to something. I watched the first episode, it's fantastic. And you, I think you put it very, very eloquently when you said this is something you can't look at advice or look at something else away from the screen because there's so much going on. You have to pay attention to the details. I actually watched the first episode two times. Okay. And caught more things in the second watch. So when you when you first took a look at the script and you tried to figure out, okay, where are we going with it? Were you able to visualize? In, in comparison to the first episode, were you able to visualize what actually transpired on the screen, or was it very different than what how to play out in your mind the first time? Um, I knew it was weird, and I knew it was very unique. But you know, truthfully, for, for me as a, as an Asian American actor, the first thing I actually looked at was not so much the entirety of the script. I was like, whoa, this is a first character that, you know, usually I'm literally, I've done, I think every you know, joke is I've done every Chinatown episode known to me, like Law and Order, like it just, it, like every every procedural has a Chinatown episode. And so I feel like I've done every single one of those. And when I read this, it was the first time in 18 years that didn't fit in any of those boxes. And I was like, wow, I actually get to speak like I speak. And I actually have this character I can relate to because it's he has those feelings, that's how I grew up with my feelings, you know. And I'm so used to uh, having to detonate someone or kick someone in the head and there's having that, not being able to have that second layer and that third layer to go to, this was, it was a huge treat. Yeah, and I, I watched the last show that you're on, because it's one of my favorite shows, Strike right Back, uh -huh. and that's pretty much, but it, I think you went a little bit further also to show the, the connection you had with your, with your partner. Yeah, it was very interesting watching that. But this show, I think, is also very interesting because I like Asian. So I start seeing uh -huh. how you interact in space with your, your mother in the show, um, which is um, I, I thought it, it, it touched on that personal yeah. aspect as well. So it's very good. Well, I think it's also the general, the, you know, movement of cable television that allows us to even to have those kind of villains have yeah. some kind of depth in there. And I did see, I think, going to the people of color in 
analogy. I, when I looked at you, I didn't see you as the Asian person. Yeah. I saw you as a person first, and then see you develop and develop the family aspect first. Yeah. So it was actually a good portrayal. Yeah. So far in episode one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, 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 and they just keep getting more. They start drawing you in more and more. I mean, I've watched up to four. I just got five, and they just suck you in. So it's also one of those shows. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Okay, thanks. Oh, do you have another? Are you good? I'm not just going to Sorry, let me get one picture.